that day, my friends? George Costanza said, like an old man taking back soup at a diner. On this particular day, I was with 10 of my closest friends, carrying a rock, 45 pounds in weight. We had been training together for 12 months. Now, this particular experience, we had hours under our belt. These 45 pound rocks were to be carried for 10 miles through deep sand. The sea kept pounding on the shores on the west coast of California. Pumping up a spray into our face, the water was about 48 degrees Fahrenheit. It was cold. At that time, my hamstring was ripped, my leg was swollen, my knee was swollen, my arms were trembling under the weight of this rock. I had a moment where I honestly didn't think for the first time in my life I could go any further. The weight was too heavy. I looked up at the Navy SEAL instructor barking orders at me. He said, it's easier to keep up than catch up, Smith. Let's go. My team started to move out. I held behind, down on one knee. This rock, the weight of it, crushing me. Two years before, I was sitting at Elm Cafe in Edmonton on the patio, enjoying a cappuccino. <laughs> I had a half hour of contemplation to myself, thinking a little bit about my beautiful family, my thriving business, how good life was. The sun was up. Blue Sky, Alberta. And then I received a phone call when everything would change for me. Many of you have had phone calls like this. You know what it feels like. My mother's voice trembling on the other line. My sister had cancer, and not the good kind. But she was a young mother. Her daughter was only three, year, three years old at the time. And so we all knew that she would fight this. We would help her fight it, and we would win. Six months later, I was at a cancer clinic with my sister. She had lost 80 pounds through her treatments. And I remember in this cancer clinic, carrying her from room to room. She weighed next to nothing. In my mind, I thought, I will carry you for as long as it takes. I will carry you forever if I have to. If we can beat this, if that's what it takes, I'll carry you. I was sitting at her hospital bed a few months after that, her hand in mine. She said, Jared, how can I let my little redhead daughter grow up without her mother? How can I possibly do that? She passed away. I was left in the wake of grief, as many of you have been in your lives, I'm sure. Not sure what to do. Unchartered waters. Should I pick up a bottle? Should I just bury this thing and move on? Should I get busy? I had an interesting conversation with my sensei of 20 years, a mentor and friend, Ethan Hampson. We sat down and I said, what should I do? I feel like I'm left with such huge despair. Waves of it are crashing over top of me. And he said, fight hardship with hardship. I said, I thought he'd say that. <laughs> what do you mean by that? He said, find something tough that requires a team of people around you to accomplish. Go do that. It'll give you a sense of direction and focus. Well, one thing led to another. I had chosen an impossible adventure with Navy SEALs that would require 12 months of training to prepare. I recruited 18 men. We whittled down to 11 through two hours, sometimes four hours a day of training in preparation for what would become what we would call our crucible. 
We were pretty excited about this opportunity, and that year was a good one for me. It provided me with that direction and focus, something to honor my sister with. And every push-up, every burpee, every single pull-up that I did, I thought about the pain that she had to endure, and it made my pain a little less. So there we were after all of this training, standing in this incredible facility called Seal Fit. Commander Mark Devine, former Seal Team 3 commander, owned and operated this facility. He allowed us to come and find out what it meant to be, as he said, the real deal Navy SEAL. <laughs> First few days at this camp were part torture, part G.I. Joe, part fun, weapons training, hand-to-hand -hand combat. We did a lot of training simulations, long runs on the beach. We had a lot of fun. It was tough, but we knew that these SEALs were preparing us for what would become our crucible. The crucible was modeled after Hell Week. And for those of you that have watched any Hollywood Navy SEAL movies, you've had a glimpse of it. Just imagine 90 to two hour minutes, or two hour sessions on the beach under 350 pound logs with rocks on what's called the grinder, which is a cement concrete pad in a training facility. This would be an endless hour after hour regimen that was intended to break us. And the idea of it was that when you meet your end, the learning starts. So there we stood at the beginning of what would become our crucible, not Sure, what would happen to us? Hands on her back, waiting in anticipation. And a Navy SEAL who we had never met before, smaller man, ripped, shredded arms, tattoos everywhere. He started pacing back and forth, eyeballing us. So, the Canadians are here. Find out what it's like to be a Navy SEAL. So I hear you're tough. You don't look tough. <coughs> because I need you to know I've made men and women way tougher than you cry within the first four hours of my little simulation. So do you know what Navy SEALs do on Memorial Day? Memorial Day and today happened to be. He said, you know what we do? We celebrate the lives of the men we've lost, whether our sisters or brothers. We have a barbecue, we toast them. I've lost eight men in the last 12 years. But I'm not with them. Because I've been voluntold to come out here and spend some time with the Canadians who want a Navy SEAL experience. He says, I have one thing to say to you. You better not waste my time. Well, that was the first time since I was four years old. The little trickle of urine passed <laughs> down the inside of my pant leg. It would begin from there, and there were three profound moments over the next 36 hour journey. 90 minute intervals with four minute breaks. The only thing we had to recover it was Gatorade and fig barbs. I swear to God, if anyone here has a fig bar, I'll puke right now. <laughs> <laughs> there were three profound things that hit me in this experience. The first, the first happened when we were asked to go into the high plank, which is essentially this position. It's the high plank position. It's a push-up position. Many of you have probably tried it. Our instructor said, Smith, your team, what's your max high plank? I said, eight minutes and 25 seconds. We tested it many times before. He said, pick a number between 29 and 30. <laughs> I laughed. He didn't. <laughs> and we went into the high plank position. At minute 
This was after about 22 hours of training. We thought we were going to die. I looked over at my buddy Bennett. His arms were shaking like this. The SEAL instructor kept barking at him. Stop shaking, Bennett! It didn't help. <laughs> at minute seven, he said, OK, we are going to cheer together. The following. Easy day. We've got this. Hoo-yah! And we started cheering this chant together. And I want you to finally like, just feel what it felt like through an experiment. We're going to cheer this together. A count of three for four different rounds. We're going to say, easy day. We've got this. hoo Let's scare people outside the Citadel <laughs> with the volume. One, two, three. Easy day. We got this. hoo Easy day. probably 1,370 times. <laughs> and then we looked up, shaking in a puddle of sweat, and we realized that we had made it to 31 minutes. We celebrated, and the celebrations were short-lived. <laughs> During one of the next evolutions, uh, it was after surf torture, uh, and then just before Beach Wars, we were asked to link arms and head into the water. It was 3 o'clock in the morning, and the night was long. Darkness is not your friend on the beaches with five Navy SEALs. And as a team, we linked arms. We were asked to back into these huge pounding waves in the surf and lay our heads down on the sand and let the waves crash on top of us over and over and over again. And the SEALs claimed that we would be able to last at least 20 minutes in this position. And every time the wave crashed on top of us, frigid water, here you couldn't breathe, you couldn't see, you couldn't speak, sand was in places that I didn't even know I had. <laughs> Linked arms, I started in on this self-talk of pity. Thought to myself, why did I do this? <laughs> why? I'm an idiot. This is horrible. I can't do this anymore. I'm so cold. I was actually shivering so badly that one of the uh, instructors said, that's not shivering, that's jackhammering. <laughs> Stop jackhammering, Smith. <laughs> I was shivering so cold. I was praying that my, my buddy next to me would pee in the water. <laughs> and then I had a moment when my instructor said, if you're focused on yourself right now, you won't last another minute. Your job is him. The man next to you, his job is you. Get out of your head, boys. profound as soon as I started focusing on Montgomery to my right, my swim buddy, the man I'm supposed to protect. I asked him, how you doing Montgomery? I think we got this. Let's just hold on. Let's keep holding on. Here comes another one. <gasps> Everything changed. The evolution with the rocks was called the will to live. Our instructor had said, the reason this evolution it's called the will to live. It's because if you don't think this is life or death, you won't make it through the first mile. We have 10 miles of hiking, and when we see sweat on your faces, we're going to put you into the water. When we see a set of stairs in the valley, we're going to go test out the stairs to see if they can withstand the weight of you and your rocks. Well, by this time, we were delusional. By this time, we were sleep deprived, overfaked. <laughs> we had so much Gatorade in us that it was pouring out of our pores. We looked like a hot mess. 
sand caked in her hair. One of our teammates had a small concussion. He had blood all over him. We had blood all over our shoulders from carrying these logs. We were a disaster. Smith, it's easier to keep up than catch up. There I was with my rock on my one knee. My hallucination was that I was carrying my sister. But this time I couldn't carry the weight. It was too sad. Couldn't go any further. I thought I'd be stuck there forever. All of a sudden, one of my teammates came up behind me, put his hand on my back. Come on, Smith, we got this. Let's do it. My other teammates circled back. They put their hands on my back. They put their hands on each other. And we carried our rocks for the next nine miles. And not one step did I not have someone's hand on my back. My challenge for you is to not seek out happy moments. Seek out tough moments, hardship, crisis, this is where we learn. When we meet our end, the learning begins. The transformation happens. I don't care what your challenge is. It doesn't matter if it's a moment of silence for three days. It doesn't matter if it's a marathon. It doesn't matter if it's training with Navy SEALs. Find your challenge and go do that. Do it with the team. And remember, cheer together. hoo Remember, to focus on others in your moments of despair. And remember to allow for others to put their hand on your back. Thank you.